Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Health Gear podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Joining me today, we have a very special guest, Nikki Tesler, the co-founder and CEO of Be Me Health. Nikki, how are you today? I am doing fabulous. How are you, Jared? I'm doing well. I am digging your host setup right now. I love the books. I love everything that's going on behind you. Um, is this is this a is this a home office? Is this a uh, what is this? T- tell us through. Everyone's gonna be looking at this and being like, "I want this. I want that bookshelf." So it's trite. I am working out of my garage. <laughs> So no, this that's is... awesome. Hey, look at all the best companies ever that have done that. I mean, you're, you're following in line. Right. I wouldn't mind just, I don't know, 0.01% success of those that have started out of their garage. Um, I am in Miami. Uh, one day I hope to have true headquarters in Miami. But for now, Be Me is run and driven through my garage. Oh, my God. I love that. That is so awesome. Yeah, and no, it's every company. Every company that starts out of a garage becomes like Apple and and Google and Amazon, right? There's no there's no other situations that happen. So that's that'll be what happens to you. And although there's a big argument to be made that you have uh, a, a lot more uh, impact as as great as all those companies are, uh, you know what you're doing for for teen mental health cannot go uh, unnoticed, unrecognized. So I'm excited to hear more about you know you. And then also to get that overview of Be Me Health, and hopefully we have some listeners that haven't heard about you so that this is their first time. So let's start off with, with your introduction. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So most importantly, I'm a mom of two teenage daughters, Ruthie and Kate, who are 17 and 15. So when I tell you that they're keeping me honest about this company, I'm not kidding. Um, I'm a psychologist by training. It's been a lifelong love of mine to um, give my life to mental health. In fact, it's not that mental health found me. I think I found mental health. Uh, And so to be able to jump in the deep end and set a new direction for teen mental health has been uh, incredible. Uh, Prior to doing that, I was at UHS managing a very large book of behavioral health business. Uh, So uh, nothing excites me more uh, than being able to look at these digital natives and figure out how we can kind of shift the paradigm finally so that they have something that resonates for them and isn't outmoded the way that perhaps they perceive it today. I love that. And do you, like a lot of kids have homework. Do your kids have like product testing, you know, for 30 minutes a night with solid feedback or, you know, no, no fun on the weekend or what does that look like? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, how I wish. Um, that, you know, I have a teen advisory board. Uh, It's one of our superpowers of the company of 166 teens that are building this company by my side. Both my girls are part of the teen advisory board. Um, But if I was to tell you how active they are, I think their mom being the CEO is not the coolest thing they've ever heard. Uh, And so um, they, you know, I think prefer some of their own interests and socializing. So I do have them involved to some degree. In fact, um, we do have a Being Me podcast where my oldest actually is one of the co-hosts. Uh, uh, but you know, all in all, I think the 164 other teen advisory are really um, you know building this company with me. That's so cool. And a couple of questions come to mind, right? When you talk about this teen advisory board uh, or advisory panel. Um, no council, you said, right? Council was it teen advisory board? There are board. tab, I call them my tabbers. Okay, so how you, you said my favorite term when you were describing that too, uh, super like one of your superpowers. Uh, I always ask people that too. That's any company I meet, like what's your superpower or super or ideally superpowers, right? Uh, how are you like collecting the feedback from them? Like, is it Is it throughout the year? Is it just kind of, uh, you know, whenever um, a a set period of time? I'm always curious about, you know, that that you don't have to say how you're necessarily collecting the feedback, but like the frequency maybe of it or, um, you know, what you kind of strive to do. Yeah. So actually, they um, hold board meetings every week. Uh, And so 
We do it a couple of different ways. I would say it's somewhat of a three-pronged approach. One is, is the, the teen advisory board meeting. So they, what we have is different um, agenda items to present. So it might be a new product feature. It might be uh, their experience on certain uh, aspects of the you know content or care activities, et cetera, and what they're wanting to see different or what they like. Um, I always come on and do my own meeting with them um, periodically about what we suck at <laughs> uh, so that I can also get um, make sure that they understand that we're not just asking for their feedback, but actually we're doing something about it. But in addition to that, there's two other things. We do focus groups. So if we're really looking at males, for example, and ensuring that we're really resonating um, for male teens, for example, we'll do focus groups that really dig into and, and have a, you know, 166 teens is a lot. So we try to make sure we do kind of separate, uh, you know, offset that with individual or smaller group meetings on specific, whether they're interested in it. Some of them really like content creation. Others are um, actually more into the clinical stuff. And so we um, do it that way as well. So a series of different meeting forums. And then we do asynchronous Slack. Uh, they do have their own Slack channel. Uh, and so a lot of polls, feedback, and, and so forth are given through that. And so for those introverts in the world um, that don't like speaking in board meetings or maybe don't give all of their feedback that's so valuable to us in smaller group settings, you better believe the asynchronous um, allows them to either, you know, DM or be a part of the group giving feedback. So we've got, uh, I'm not kidding when I say they're building this company with me. What a cool opportunity for them as well, yes. as well as, you know, for, for you, that, that is such valuable feedback and to do it in the way that you're, you're, you're gathering it is, I can see why it's a superpower. And what I would say, one of the, the, if I was to say the serendipitous piece to it is that, as you know, there's a lot of stigma with mental health. Um, what has happened is these teens feel like they're creating the next generation of mental health support. So instead of looking at it as, oh, I have mental health issues or mental health issues are not sexy or whatever it is, they're not even, it's like kicked on its butt on the side and they're actually going, I'm creating, I'm part of the inventing for my generation, what mental health support looks like. And so the freedom and like the unleashing of these teens and their talents to be a part of it um, has been so amazing and inspiring to me because I've seen stigma have such an impact on keeping us as laggards uh, as an industry that this just has unlocked them in a way. And I just, um, that's something that was not deliberate. I, that has been a serendipitous piece to this company. That's so interesting. Well, I, I'm, I'm excited that you implemented that. And it's, you know, another, another check mark into uh, the, the success story that, that you're, you're building here and the impact that you're creating uh, for, for these teens. Um, what, what a cool thing to be able to work on every single day and get inspired. And um, I'm sure even, you know, in the startup world, we all have tough days too. It's just part of the, the but for you to be like on these tough days too, and say, I'm going to just go into Slack and see what people are saying, or like, that is so cool to be able to, um, you know, have that light. And that, like you said, that superpower in no matter what the situation is, you have that, that valuable feedback, you're helping. Um, th these teams are also helping you in terms of I like how you worded that though. Like they're, they're getting to structure kind of how mental health is for their generation. And um, so, so kudos to you and the team. Yeah. They, the, the interesting part um, with them in my hard days is they write test. It is wickedly hard doing this. Right. And you think about things like social media, you think about people afraid of phones, right. Addiction to phones, all of those things. And so this is not easy what we're trying to do, but to your point, it's very hard. And so I get out of bed because of those testimonials. We get it all the time. I finally feel understood by somebody. I finally don't feel alone. I finally feel like I have a safe place that's supporting me. And you just feel like keep, you know, and I would say that on behalf of all 44 Beamers, we all feel that, that it's mission critical to our hearts. But when you hear that, you can't help but jump out of bed and be like, as hard as it is, we're going to make a small change in this world. I love that, Nikki. That's, that's, 
Absolutely awesome. Um, I want to, because I, I I don't know it's uh, I kind of skipped by it because we were getting so into the uh, the advisory board that you have here. What what like originally drove you wanting to start this company in the first place? And then let let's let's go through kind of where the company's at today. Give us that general overview again for for hopefully the people that are tuning in that maybe haven't heard of you. Yeah, so it's actually um, two two reasons. Um, one was that I actually a few years back was diagnosed with breast cancer, and um, whenever you receive that kind of a word uh, and diagnosis, uh, it just slayed me uh, in terms of what legacy looks like. And I never believed because I've never thought about my legacy. I was like, oh no, life is forever. I'm in health denial. That's perfect. But honestly, legacy to me is what you do today, right? It's not what you're remembered by. It's not what you leave, right? It's what you do now. And I, my girls, of course, were everything in my head when this happened. And so the other part of it was, it's been the lifelong love of my mental health. I know too much to look at these digital natives and accept that this outmoded way we do mental health care is okay. And I wanted to honestly show them, walk your walk, jump in the deep end, create new net, new opportunities in the world, like take risks. And teenagers never do what you say, right? But maybe you can model it in bold ways. And it was, it really got me to go, I gotta do this. Um, and do it now. So that's what drove uh, Be Me. So that's been, it's been two years. So we started the company, you know, back in September of 21, um, but we didn't launch the project, the product until January of 22. So it's been almost two years that the product has been launched. Uh, so we're just getting started. I'm so excited for you, uh, for you and the team. Um, I, I did have a question around, uh, around the business. So how how do you uniquely address or uniquely approach the the, the common challenges right of access uh, workforce shortages personalization as it as it comes to to team mental health? Perfect. So when we started the company, the first thing I thought of was, okay, we're talking revolutionizing teen mental health care. How are we going to do it? And if you look directly at um, the industry, I would want you to spin around and look at the white space uh, and say, okay, all of this is not being touched. And as a result, teens are not adherent to treatment. At least 50% aren't even, if they um, need treatment, aren't even involved in treatment. Even with teens, it's even higher than that. So what needs to be done? So I, first thing I did was build a team and it was a team that didn't just have domain expertise like myself. The legacy pain points of mental health have been things like we're not scalable. Um, we're not reaching or engaging teens, right? Our experience innovation, not so great, right? We're not sexy like cancer, cardiac, right? These for-profit centers. So I need a team that transcends the talent of mental health. Um, you know, mental health has been talent starved. Uh, and so... What can we do about getting engagement brainiacs and others outside of mental health to be willing to solve this problem with me? And so now I sit with the diversity of thought like no other. I always say I'm really the chief talent manager. I have that kind of a team, but you need that kind of a team to do this. And so as we look at the problems in teen mental health, what we needed to do is offer a solution that had tech and touch doesn't have to just be a service and it doesn't just have to be a product. It can be both. They're not mutually exclusive. And so we built it understanding four issues, right? So one is access, but it can't just be access. It's got to be access that works. And the spoiler alert is that there's never going to be enough therapists and psychiatrists in the world. The problem is too great. And candidly, it's not enough to say that's all that's needed. Why can't we have different levels of support? to go after this problem and more tiers so that all teens get some sort of support. Those that might have mental health conditions, those that might not or might never go there or might be at risk for it, but we wanna preemptively help them. How do we help all teens become their best versions of themselves? 
And so we did tech and touch combined engaging technology and human connection to help teens not just endure, but also flourish. And so what that looked like was the second part, how do we reach them? So our platform has captivating content. Think about that as like medicine and the honey. Um, and that allows teens to really get uh, support, but support that science backed. Content, the other kind of self-guided place, is actually um, like a mini app store. These care activities that I'm talking about is like behavioral activation. So not just what they're ingesting, but what, what skills are we providing? How are we finally equipping these kids so that we can reach them? And then the next is engagement, right? So human contact, like coaching, it's 14 hours a day, it's seven days a week. Why? Because we know there's no support available at night and on the weekends, and teens need something on demand, always there, always available, or else they will go to social media. And so we've got to figure out mobile mechanisms of support so that when they're having feelings at night or support that somebody is there for them. We also have white labeled partnerships for therapy and psychiatry, and of course, crisis support. Our 1866 Hey Be Me, we actually answer in less than a minute. And so that provides this comprehensive offering that goes after everything from access, engagement, reach, but also cost uh, so that we can help teens, you know, they don't need to go to the EDs, these high cost centers, because they might not need to be at that level, but they haven't had anybody intervening quickly or earlier and the touch points laid out so that we can give them the support they deserve before that happens. And so this then allows, as they come onto the app, something personalized and individualized for them so that we're engaging and influencing them, but then we're having the impact. Because I think the other concern for me is, again, that there's been a lot of pathologizing that's gone on in our field, and it's really scared teens away. Like, is something wrong with me? And instead, what we're trying to do is say, actually, we don't just want you to reduce whatever symptoms you have, but actually help provide psychological benefit so that whatever's in store for you, whatever in wait for you in life, we're going to help you get there. It's all about in the striving. And I think that horizontal play versus looking at mental health as some vertical or silo in some ecosystem is what's been sorely missing. I love I love your approach. I love your passion. Hmm. It's super exciting what's happening over at, at BME Health. And one of the things that that I, I do want you to talk a little bit about, um, we have a little time here, is your partnership with IEHP and Molina out in California. Um, you know, I feel like you gave us a great, you kind of talked us through, and now let's talk about one of these partnerships and how, you know, it impacts uh, what you're doing. Yeah, we're so excited about this partnership to have two payers, right? IEHP and Molina of California come together with us as a startup to actually do first of the world kind of community initiative. So it's not like a, just a school play. It's actually payers coming with an entrepreneurial company to say, we want to do a community initiative in an innovative, different way. And so in San Bernardino uh, County and um, Riverside, we're going after 72,000 students and giving them the access they deserve. So think about it as democratizing access and being able to finally support all these teens in such an important way. And then together, looking at the metrics, looking at their data, looking at our data and say, how do we ever improve this wonderful partnerships that we're rolling out in 10 different school districts so that we can replicate it, right? We can start here, but continue to allow for all of these students across um, to do that. So think of it like a proof of concept where we're really truly being thought partners here. Um, and it's students that typically are out of reach, right? Those that are struggling with equity issues um, and other uh, concerns that aren't able to get the care they deserve. Uh, so we're really, uh, you know, we started this partnership and I'm just, you know, over the moon to have this type of support because at the end of the day, mental health, as you know, is a team sport. Um, and so it takes all of us, all hands on deck to make it happen. So you know, look out for some of the metrics and data that comes out of this partnership. Well, 
Nikki, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the podcast here today. I can't wait to have you come on again in the near future. And uh, hopefully we can continue to dig deeper. And uh, let's definitely stay in touch. I, I look forward to hearing more about the progress. I would love it. Thank you, Jared. I appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you.